So today we're going to be doing a lecture on membranes and specifically plasma membranes and we're going to be looking at eukaryotic cells. Okay, so plasma membranes are made up of phospholipids, um, they're also made up of glycolipids and cholesterol. Okay? Um, they also have proteins integrated with them and we'll see that later. Okay? Uh, but the main components are those first three. Okay, so phospholipids, what do those look like? Um, so I guess I'll, the first thing I'll do is I'll draw what most of us know they look like. So we have this head and we have this tail. And this, this head is hydrophilic and this tail is hydrophobic. So I'll just write phobic right there. Um, and so what does that even look like? Okay, so um, we have this group right here. So we have our glycerol backbone and then we have these fatty acids like that. And so if you can imagine that would be the tail and we have two of those. And so that's why we have this hydrophobic tail um, and this hydrophilic head. And what actually is at the end of this is a, is a choline group. Right? Um, don't worry about the name. It's, it's not at all important. Um, but just know that this is where you get that little head from right there. Right? And that's why you have two tails like that. Right? Um, so a glycolipid uh, pretty much looks the same thing except at the end instead of this choline you have uh, uh, some type of sugar. Um, Glucose, maybe. Um, and so cholesterol. Cholesterol is kind of different. Cholesterol, um, it, it is, this is a simplified version. It has a head, a hydrophilic head, and a hydrophobic tail. Um, but what it kind of looks like, this is, not, this is not what the full structure looks like. But for the MCAT, this is all you really need to know. The important part is what you need to know. You need to know that there's this OH is what makes this the, hydrophil the hydrophilic head. And all these tail groups and all these uh, hydrocarbons make it a hydrophobic tail. Okay? So just know there's one tail versus two in the uh, phospholipid. Okay, so the next thing we've been looking at um, are phospholipids and how they actually arrange themselves. Okay? So they arrange themselves in a lipid bilayer. Okay, um, so we have this lipid bilayer right here, um, and so they arrange themselves back to back, and we see that the hydrophilic side is on the outside, and the hydrophobic side um, is on the inside. And if you can imagine, that should make a lot of sense because um, if we have, if we're, we're constantly surrounded by water, you know, most of our body is made out of water, so the outside, uh, which is all this H2O on the outside, is going to interact fairly well with the hydrophilic um, head. Okay. So you wouldn't have it in the reverse direction where you have tails on the outside and the heads on the inside. Okay? So this is just a very basic uh, you know, phospholipid backbone, uh, but we can also add other things. So for example, this guy right here, that would be what? That would be our cholesterol, right? So we can have cholesterol mixed in there like that, but we can also have these proteins like this. Okay? Um, so we can have these proteins like this, and we can have also proteins that go the full amount like that. Okay, so this would be called a transmembrane protein, and this is called an integral membrane protein. All right, so now that we see all these uh, phospholipids and the cholesterol and the proteins working together, um, how does that work? Um, and it's something called the fluid mosaic model, and what that says is that um, these phospholipids are allowed to move laterally, so they're allowed to move um, left and right, but they can't switch up and down, so this will not occur. This guy right here can't all of a sudden go like that. He can't move like that, so that would not be the case, but these guys can switch places, and that's how it's very fluid, and so it can allow things to pass through, but only certain things, and so we'll look at that. All right? So the first thing I want to talk about is diffusion and osmosis. Okay, so what's the difference between these? Okay, so they're, they're fairly similar but fairly distinct. Um, so diffusion is the passing of solute versus osmosis is the passing of solvent. So what does that mean? Um, so the solute is whatever is the, in the smaller amount. Um, and we can think of it like salt water. Okay, salt water, the, the salt is going to be the solute and the solvent is going to be the actual water. Okay? Um, so the solute in diffusion will move from the higher concentration down to a lower concentration. Okay? Um, and so if you can imagine something like this, and we have a semi-permeable semi membrane like that, um, so it's going to have an equal height in the two, 
But if you have a high concentration over here and a small concentration, these guys are going to flow to the right. All right? Now let's look at osmosis. So osmosis is the solvent moving. And it, the solvent moves from a lower concentration up to a higher concentration. And so that may seem counterintuitive, but let's see what that means. Um, so all we're trying to do in both cases is make it so it's equilibrium. All right? So always remember that osmosis and diffusion make it towards equilibrium and they don't require any energy. All right? So we have the same membrane right here um, and say they're for now at equal levels, but this side over here has a lot more and this side just has fairly little concentration. All right? So the lower concentration, the water, is going to move from here over to the higher concentration. And we'll see that what actually ends up happening is that yeah, there's a lot of solute particles here, but now for a much smaller volume, there's um, a lot less solute, but the concentrations are equal. All right? So here we're trying to balance the amount of concentration, and here we're trying to balance the amount of solute, so that both of them have the same amount of solute. But ultimately, that would be concentration as well, but we're looking at solute versus solvent. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at um, is transport, and we're going to be comparing passive to active transport. All right? Um, so passive requires no energy and it is going down a, a gradient uh, versus active which requires energy and it goes against the gradient. All right? So there's a couple different types of passive diffusion. Um, one is just simple diffusion like we saw. Um, simple diffusion is just like we saw in the previous uh, slide is that it's just basic diffusion where you pass um, solute molecules across the membrane. It doesn't require any protein helper. All right. versus facilitated, um, and if you, if you know facilitated is like facilitate something, you're, you're helping with something, so you need some type of helper molecules. Um, so there's two different helper molecules, which are channels and also carriers. All right. So channels are, are a type of uh, protein uh, facilitator, um, and there's voltage gated and there's also ion gated and they're both channels okay and so voltage gated is activated so the channel will open when you have some type of change in uh, electric potential or voltage and for ion channels um, it's when you have some type of change in charge all right and so carriers we have uniport we have symport and we have antiport all right um, so uniport transfers one molecule um, and going down in one direction. Symport is two molecules down in one direction. Antiport is also two molecules, but one going up, one going down. All right? um, and so the, we're going to look at active transport next, and it's broken up into primary and secondary. And just so we know is that active transport always will use some type of protein. Okay, so imagine if this is our protein and this is our plasma membrane. All right? So active primary transport will use ATP hydrolysis directly. So if we have this ATP hydrolysis, um, then now this will allow some molecules to flow through. Versus secondary transport, um, it will use ATP hydrolysis somewhere else, all right, in some type of secondary reaction. And this gradient that was, uh, was caused um, now would allow that molecules can pass through this protein. So we see that primary transport um, uses it directly, uses ATP directly, versus secondary uses the ATP indirectly. Okay. Um, so obviously the, they can get a little bit more complicated than this, uh, but for the MCAT's purpose, you know, you don't have to worry about all that type of detail.